Grandmaster, Grandmaster, Grandmaster Flowers Grandmaster, Grandmaster, Grandmaster Flowers Becomes a creature, becomes a dragon Boop, 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 that's what Becomes a creature, becomes a god Boop, 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 that's what Grandmaster, Grandmaster, Grandmaster Flowers Grandmaster, Grandmaster Flowers Becomes a creature, becomes a dragon Boop, 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 that's what they're Becomes a creature, becomes a god Boop, 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 that's what they're Section 1. The Planeswalkers, a list of amazing white walkers to quickly put our opponents in a world of trouble. Section 2. Token Producers. With these cards we make an army of tokens to beat down our opponents or protect the Planeswalkers. Section 3. Life King Synergy, so we are never under risk of dying quickly to aggro. The rest of the decks are value creatures, draw spells, removal, four wipes and we ram. What's up everyone, welcome back one more time, you know the deal, we play Historic Brawl! And today we're playing with the Grandmaster, Grandmaster of Flowers Versus Ursa, Lord Protector, so... Kind of a nice mono white planeswalker token -y life gain deck Starting up with a Hunted Witness This deck comes from, from the mind of... comes from the mind of Dr. Sheriff so, aka Dr. Sheriff, he is George. George, one of the main supporters of this channel. And I really love Grandmaster of Flowers. Um, it's uh, not a very, very powerful commander. But when it works, it really works. So, here it is, the Grandmaster of Flowers. So, now we can go fetch for our one-off Monk of the Open Hand. So... OP, already OP winning here, Monk of the Open Hand. Not in our opening hand, per se, but almost, almost. So Grandmaster, we want to get it to 7, so he becomes a Dragon God Indestructible. Like, this should be at least starting at 5 loyalty for nowadays standards. Alright, so we disable Ursa. I would like to kill Ursa instead of just... Making it not attack or block. So I guess we set up with the Tokashia's Welcome plus the Monk. We play the Monk after the Welcome so we can draw of it. We also have the Firection Scrap Yard, which I've been playing with the card. And I can assure you that card is really overpowered. Making the Zold of Infirexia we have quite a hand, huh? Opponent, Founder Inspector, Midnight Clock, yikes, oh no, Mystic Forge as well. Well, that is too bad. Very bad news for us. So what do we kill here? I guess Ursa is a better Founder Inspector, so we shall kill Ursa. Do we Wrath? I think we have to Wrath. Or maybe we, maybe we don't, so we can... Let's, let's hit our land drops. Let's use... Fire Action Scrapyard. So this is the cool thing about Fire Action Scrapyard. Don't have any lands? Alright. Let's search for one of... Let's discard the uh, Wrath. Because I'm going to use the swords. Play the Scrapyard. We can activate the Scrapyard again. We might, we might be doing the Soul of New Fire Action just for content. Wow. Alright, so... We can... Source of Plowshares, the Ursa. And we just defend the Grandmaster of Flowers. Making this thing not attack. Take a moment and to consider your actions. Let's move to attacks. Attack for two, I'm not going to play the Black Blade. I'm just going to make another Firection Scrapyard. So next turn we can we can create the Soul of Infirexia if we wanted to. That's funny. Next turn we get Grandmaster to seven if they don't remove it. 
And we can start beating face with the Grandmaster of Flowers as well. Witching well for the opponent. Cool. You're going to scry two. One to the top, one to the bottom. And the Might Stone and Weak Stone. That they are going to draw two cards. Presumably. Yeah. So they draw. They draw two. Yeah, Mystic Forge. Such a problem. Reality cheap. Okay. So they can reconfi- No, they don't have blue mana to do that. Alright, so well, at least we're going to activate the Grand Master. Let's discard the Black Blade. Make another land. Yes, Firection Scrapyard. It's a very good land. It has to be the best colorless land printed for Historic Brawl. So let's let's think about this. Play these and Sanctuary Warden here puts a lot of pressure on them. We can draw a card. If they have a wrath, this survives a destroy wrath. And at least we can start drawing cards. The next turn we can go for the Firection Scrapyard thing. For the Soul of New Firection. <laughs> Gideon's Triumph. Alright, so makes that makes let's make the Founder Inspector not able to attack or block. And here he comes. Here he comes. GMF in the air, indestructible. Look at this. Yes, we did it. So we can attack with the three things. Push through eight damage. So if they have a Wrath of God, then we are fine. If they have um, Farewell, then we are probably dead. The next turn, Soul of Nefireksha. Okay, okay. I guess I was wondering if I should do it right now, but playing Sanctuary Warden has to be better. Has to be better. Opponent has quite the setup. They have early infinite mana, a Midnight Clock, a Mystic Forge, and then they can reconfigure the Reality Chip and play from their top of the deck. Not that they cannot do that, because they have Mystic Forge already. Yeah. This is... They have a very good setup. I don't know if we have enough. So, we are not presenting lethal. I mean, we are presenting lethal, but... It's very unlikely that this is going to change. But they have to put something on the board or remove... One of our big creatures, we're of invention. Wow, for eight? Where are they going for? I thought they were going for... Oh, they should have gone for... No, leveler does not work that way. Yes, okay, all right, so... Leveler is cast trigger. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, leveler, <laughs> my friend. Leveler is a... Leveler is a cast trigger. So whenever you cast the spell. And they just um, tutor for it with Weird of Invention. So, well, there you have it. Here we are for another round with the Grand Master of Flowers. Versus Nethroy, Apex of Death. Opponent goes first. Oh, we have a very good card. A very good hand with a new card, which is... White Sands Twilight that I've been eager to play in Historic Brawl, because in Limited this is a bomb. And I really think that if you get to 7 mana in Historic Brawl, it should be a Winken as well. Because you make 5 of the Mites with Toxic, and I believe that you can close the game with those 5 Mites. Well, let's play the Apparition. Yeah, our start is very, very slow. And uneventful, like Grateful Apparition is nice, but we are a minute away from casting our first Planeswalker. And opponent is on Nethroy, probably Reanimator, of course. That's the way to go with Nethroy. 
So hopefully they cannot fill the yard. Four mana do nothing. That's interesting. So the joke's on you. We are not going to play anything as well. Um, just attack with the operation. It looks like they have interaction, but they are hesitant to use it on the Grateful Apparition. All right, so proliferate on nothing and just pass. Give us a target for the swords so we can feel a little bit better about not doing anything at all. Yeah, we play their forest and a Trostani. Well, yeah, not the best target, but it's still a target. So they still get to make two one ones. So Cassius, welcome. Oh, uh, well, I think we have to slam one of our planeswalkers. It could be either the Grandmaster or Sarah. Sarah makes creatures. Sarah makes creatures. It can also pump the flyers. Can we defend Sarah? Is we put it. We take it down to one. They attack. They kill Sarah. On the other hand, Grandmaster of Flowers survives. Yeah, so not, let's I will guide take up. Try to get him to try to get him to seven loyalty. We can proliferate and essentially recover from the one damage that they can do to it by attacking it. Yeah, it's Sarah would Sarah would die. Because if they have a removal spell, we we take it down, we make Take it down, make the angel, and they remove it, and they kill our Sarah. There are better ways to so, I guess GMF is better. So opponent attacks Grandmaster of Flowers, gains a life, and then destroys it. So, oh, well, I guess we saved one point of, of damage doing that. Well, missing land drops. Well, that's not good. So... This might mean that we need to go for Sarah, and I'm going to take Sarah down, make the 4-4, and pray for her for no removal spell. We still attack with the Apparition, because it proliferates on Sarah, so essentially we are protecting her from one of the two creatures by doing that. If they have a removal spell, we, we just lose. Oh, okay. This does not work, right? Yeah. Nothing to destroy. Just a 4-4 four, four and they don't attack. Okay, okay, okay. So we are back in business. So we can give... Uh -huh, uh, we can give fly, uh, plus one plus one to our flyers. But they have a 4-4 four, four Reacher. Reacher, Trampler, Lifelinker. So... We could play Gideon and maybe give it indestructible. So we can take up, give it indestructible. So they they will have to block the apparition by doing that. Well, we also could have made them chump the five five if they if they really wanted to. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't need, don't, didn't need to try to attack with the apparition. I'm just going to, to do it because it's not going to die. But at least we get in with a 5 5 vigilance. We could have given life links to the 5 5. There it is. They play a Florahedron and a Lurus, but no no payoffs in their graveyard. So that's the good thing right now. They don't have anything going for them in the graveyard. And they cannot attack our Planeswalker, so there's the Fire Action Vindicator. Alright, so... How do we do this? Vindicator... We can take up Gideon Blackblade. We can take up Sarah. Or we can take down Make Another Angel, but... Let's grow our flyers. I would like to get the emblem of Sarah. And once again, just give indestructible to the apparition. Attack them for a bunch.
And then we have a very good blocker in the Vindicator. New card from Pyrexia Old will be one, gain a life. And our Planeswalker is looking pretty strong. This is... This is the... Grandmaster of Flowerless Victory. Ooh, opponent activates the castle locked when... Yeah, we probably have them now. Yeah! Well, there you have it. There you have it, Mono White Planeswalkers tokens. Clive King? Ladies and gentlemen, we continue to play with Grandmaster Flowers facing Domri Chaos Bringer. Gruel. Gruel action. Opponent goes first. This hand versus Domri. Uh, pretty bad. We have the curse, but we now have to mulligan. Alright, this is um, not really very encouraging either. Let's go to six and i mean we have to keep this but i'm still like versus domri you want to have pressure early they are going first uh, i don't like our chances but we are going to give it a try when it says hello we play the heliors hawk maybe we can attack domri to death there is a mountain for them and an elysian cariati that we are going to kill as fast as we can Direction Scrapyard, spicy. Did not get to activate it on the, on the first game. Okay, we might do it this game. A little bit slow. I would be surprised if we survived long enough for using the Direction Scrapyard. But this is a very powerful land. Don't overlook this card. Shaper Sanctuary. Ugh. Don't like to see that car. All right, so they have haste, and when we target them, their creatures, they are going to draw cards. We just play our staff and attack them for one life linker. Next turn, we can Elspeth conquers death. Something. All right, so yeah, ECD can take care uh, can take care of Tomri. Because Shaper Sanctuary is only on creatures that we target, so... It's a small victory. Wow, two creatures. Yeah. Kind of disgusting. Alright, so Gideon's Triumph. Yeah, I don't know about Gideon's Triumph, but... Well, it's flavorful, and this deck is about flavor. Gideon's Triumph requires that they attack us with something. We're gonna destroy the Crushing Drawbridge. Cannot make it block, so we can just play the Elspeth, the Elspeth Conquer's Death on Damri. Yeah, take two from or take yeah take two from the staff and keep gaining life with the Healer's Hog. They have a Elder Gargroth in hand, so if they find their fifth land, we are in trouble because they can give it haste. Oh. So they can play it and immediately attack and get the value from it, which is pretty bad for us. Yeah, they have the land. Not looking good. Elder Gargoth hits the battlefield. And now it's going to hit our face. They're going to draw a card, presumably. Yeah, they draw. And our removal spell is Gideon's Triumph. Oh. Alright, so... We can play Gideon of the Trial. So we can play the Grandmaster of Flowers and make... Make that Elder Gargroth cannot attack. We can do it like this. We can sack. We can move Gideon to the graveyard. Get a land. Because next turn, ECD is going to trigger and we can reanimate Gideon. So there's nothing else to reanimate from our yard. And now we attack. Please block. Yeah, they block. Okay, so we can deal with Gideon's Tribe. We can deal with Elder Gargor using Gideon's Tribe. So we don't target them with Shaper Sanctuary. So I was laughing at Gideon's at Gideon's Triumph, but in this situation, it helped us disallowing their opponent from our opponent from drawing from Shaper Sanctuary. So who's laughing at that car now? Cogla. Oh my god. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. We are at the portion of the game where they just play monsters and we just find little little creatures. Not looking good, guys. Not looking good. Now we are attacked. They can destroy. Well, yeah, they go for the they go for the staff. What we can do is we can discard this to make an to make another land drop next turn. So Pyrexian Scrap are doing its thing. And a Karn. We can get back Gideon. Put a loyalty counter on it. Virtue will always triumph. And, I mean, we cannot protect Gideon by any means. Because if we emblem it, then we don't have creatures. We don't have a Gideon Planeswalker, because he's going to die. And, yeah. Our, our, our interaction is going to be super flawed here, because they are going to draw a million cards. It's, it's impossible that we win. So we can tap this, tap that. Whatever. Yeah, I wanted to play the Grandmaster. That's okay. We were going to lose anyways. Yeah, that's it. This will be our last round playing with the Grandmaster of Flowers versus Tashar, Ancestor's Apostle. Alright, so Historic Spells, Reanimator versus what we are doing, which is Planeswalker, Flavorful, a lot of Gideon cards white winnie style let's go to yeah for another hand which is better i don't know about dragon's disciple but grandmaster of flowers becomes a dragon so there's that there's a curse of silent on us so grandmaster is going to be delayed for a couple of turns that's unfortunate but hopefully nick those can take us to the victory because nick those is very very overpowered in any monocolor deck. Opponent says hi. Mishra's bubble. Interplanar beacon for us. We can play the Dragon's Disciple. No dragon to reveal, but Grandmaster of Flowers going to become a dragon eventually and beat your face. Opponent plays a Signet. We draw a Thrave and Inspector. All right, uh, not very good at this stage. We still can play it and draw the card because we cannot do anything better than that, really. Yeah, play Thraves, attack them, and then draw a card during their turn. Tashar, whenever you cast a historic spell, you can re they can reanimate a creature from their graveyard, a foundry inspector. A foundry inspector that we might need to destroy. Let's let, the, let's let this resolve and I guess we can dr still draw. Try to see if we can get them with the Gideon's Triumph. Alright, Tukash is welcome, Organ Signet. Let's go to attacks. Hopefully we can get them with the Triumph. Do you block? Block, come on. You know you want to block. All right, they don't. That makes sense. Maybe they attack next turn. So we can play a land, Arcane Signet, and wait with Gideon's Triumph up, as well as Swords. Because they are going to play Tashar. Right? So we play Nygdos. Nygdos next turn could make more mana. We play the Signet. Yeah. Because they are going to play Tashar. We play the Signet. And we just pass. And 
I would like to see them attack us first before they can play something off. Tashar. Oh, selfless savior, that's fine. And there's the Shar. Okay. So we can exile to Shar. And then they get in with Founder Inspector, which we can make them sack. Okay, okay. That's what we wanted to do. That's what we wanted to do. Wrath of God. Well. That would have been good uh, as well. So, Inner Planner Beacon. This means we could... We can make... How much mana? Can we play... Yeah, we play Tokashia's Welcome. Well, let's think for a moment. Yeah, and do that. And I guess we slam... I guess we slam GMF. This uses our mana better, puts more symbols in the battlefield that we can use with Nick those next turn. And this way we can also fetch for a Monk of the Open Hand from our library. And I guess we could attack with one of these two. And it makes sense to attack with uh, one with lesser toughness. So they have five mana. They cannot currently recast Tashar. And if they do, the next turn we might have to wrath the board if they just play Tashar. Yeah, here he comes. All right. Oh, but they have the selfless savior. What am I saying? So yeah, they have the selfless savior, which is pretty bad for us. But we have planeswalkers. Karn's Bastion. We can make the shard not able to attack the Grandmaster of Flowers or any other planeswalkers. And we can play these. Or we could play Tokasha's Welcome Plus Monk of the Open Hand to, to draw more cards. Let's first, let's see, this does not have any first strike or whatever, so we can use this on the Shar. No and then place. let's tap the colorless, tap here, and play. How much mana can we make after we play Tokashi's Welcome? Can we play Elspeth? Can we go Welcome. This makes how much? Is it enough? I think so, yes. All right, Monk, draw. And then we can play as... Ooh, Helm of the Host. Helm of the Host has a very good upside. When we have Grandmaster of Flowers, because we can start replicating our GMF. And what do we do? We, t we could try to... Could try to take her to her ultimate as well, so... Put counters on Thraves and give it what? Vigilance, so you can stay for stay for D. I guess so. All right, and now we attack with both because they're not going to block here. All right. So we're making progress. We have two Planeswalkers. They cannot attack. They have just a Selfless Savior. So now they're... Oh, Mystic Forge. Yeah. We might have to Wrath of God the board. Even... even We might have to Wrath here. Just to ensure that our Planeswalkers survive. And so that they spend their next turn trying to recast everything and redeploy their things. And we take our Planeswalkers to ultimate level if we do that. Otherwise, we could play Ugin, try to destroy Tashar, which is going to fail. 
Wrath of God plus Helm of the Host. I think we can play everything. I think we can play Wrath of God and then Ugin into Helm. That should be good, right? Tapping everything makes us 12 mana, which is exactly enough. Exactly enough. So... Hmm. All right. Let's wait for a moment. Let's do the Planeswalkers things first. Dig her up. And this is almost the same. We're, we're losing time here. I just want to ultimate all the Planeswalkers. So put it plus one, plus one counter and give it the first strike. We can even attack if we wanted to. And then make so that Tashar cannot attack or block. I shall not let you harm others. And then we could slam Mugin to try to kill Tashar. No, it's the same. So let's go to attacks first. Attack with a 3-4. With Vigilance. No blocks. Alright, so... Now we're Wrath of God, so we add mana with Nygdos. Tap everything. Wrath of God. They will sacrifice a sa safeless savior. And then we play Ugin that is going to discount the cost of our Colorless spells. And then play the helm. Oh, we can take up. Oh, of course, we can make a creature with Ugin. There's nothing else that I would like to destroy with Ugin that is that has colors. Cur Curse of Silence could be a uh, possibility, but I just I'm just better off making the 2-2. So now they cannot attack with Tashar. They can just recast their things. Next turn we are going to have a flyer. Grandmaster of Flowers 7-7. Seven, seven. We can ultimate Elspeth and we can put the Helm of the Host on the Grandmaster of Flowers and we might be able to close the game by just doing that. Am I right? So yeah, they play so many things so easy from their top of their, of their deck that they can redeploy everything. I thought it was going to cost them even more but they haven't even used the cards in their hand to do this. Yeah. So the Wrath of God line was actually almost effectless, like. But Helm of the Host might be the key, the key card in this situation. Is so we can equip it to Grandmaster of Flowers, and it well, the copy that it makes is not legendary, so we can have as many GMFs as we want. Fire of Heroes. Uh, what do they find with this? So we are going to be able to ultimate our Planeswalker, our Elspeth. I don't know if that's going to be enough, making 5-3-3 three, three Angels. Ranger Captain of Eos fetches for something else. And they have these small, nice little loops. Yeah, and now Esper Sentinel. Well, that's not too scary. The shard triggers Ingenious Smith. We see back Expert Sentinel. Well, they did their thing. Wow, a circuit mender in hand. They exile something, and they pass. They do. Ugh, Misha's Foundry. All right, all right, all right. So, do we do we win here? So, we take up the Grandmaster of Flowers on Tashar. That makes a 7-7 seven, seven flyer. We can make a copy with the Helm of the Host. So we can attack with a 414. We can take Elspeth up to put a plus one, plus one counter. Can we find lethal? I mean, we are one short. Oh, we are one short of lethal. So we can, we can put the Helm 
on the Grandmaster of Flowers, make another 7-7, attack with both. Elspeth, we could find something with the mine. Oh, no, opponent scoops! <laughs> opponent didn't want to wait. I feel like we were one short from lethal, but it might really be that opponent does not have what it takes to to cope with what we have. Like, we can make one Grandmaster of Flower indestructible each turn. We can ultimate Elspeth, put all the flyers. We can destroy something with Ugin. We can basically finish them off, but I'm not sure we could do it this turn. But yeah, there you have it. Grandmaster of Flowers doing its thing. Uh, fun, a fun commander, a fun build around. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Let's make this the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. George, Dr. Sheriff again for sharing this list. It was a fun one and I hope you enjoy as well. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, leave a like. We will see each other on a future video.